Gail Glanville and I have known each other since 1997. We met in St. Thomas. Uh, I was there to teach. She was there to learn resonance repatterning, and we weathered fierce storms in the process of doing our training together. And Gail went on to become a very uh, capable certified practitioner, very influential in the creation of the Resonance Repatterning Institute. Uh, working with Chloe, she was the director, uh, interim director at one point, pulling all the bits and pieces together to create the institute that we know uh, today as Resonance Repatterning Institute. She also is one of the founding members of the RPA, getting the realization that they were really two different organizations, and she is a Hall of Famer at the RPA as well. She lived in Rhode Island most of the years I knew her after St. Thomas with a thriving practice, uh, also doing a lot of marketing and copywriting for other people as well. And in the past year, relocated to Florida to create a thriving business as a resonance repatterning practitioner there. So it's my great honor and privilege to introduce you to my friend who's going to take us on a wonderful journey tonight uh, addressing woo-woo, etc. So welcome, Gail Glanville. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you so much, Artis. It has been a journey, hasn't it? My goodness. So today, or tonight, we're going to talk about how to deliver a fail, a can't-fail elevator speech. And you'll, you know this is the first of three series that Artis is, is hosting. I'm so glad, grateful that she's doing this. So when you think about an elevator speech, the thing to think about first is where to start. <clears throat> and since we want to take the woo-woo out of the way our work might be perceived, why not take a tip from a proven communicator? When best-selling novelist John Irving feels the muse bubble up to write a new novel, you might think he'd start with the first sentence, like most authors do, or the first chapter or an outline. But you'd be wrong. John Irving writes the last sentence first. And I can't think of better advice for you for creating a really, really smart elevator speech, especially when you're facing a gender gap or a credibility gap. Start with the end in mind. When someone asks what you do or when you find yourself in front of a group, it's smart to know what you want as a result of the words that are going to come out of your mouth. If you're running your practice as a business, then what you want most of all is a customer who's happy to pay your fees because they're committed to their own well-being and believe you are the one that can help them achieve their goals. Maybe you just want the listener to sign up for a seminar or register for your, your newsletter, but don't say a word until you know the outcome you really want. So here's what a smart elevator speech does. Imagine you're on an elevator with the one person who can most help you advance your work. You've barely a minute to influence them in your favor. What do you say? If you're tempted to start with the word I, you've lost your opportunity. That's why elevator speeches are so daunting for most holistic practitioners. We start out by saying, I'm a resonance repatterning practitioner. I'm a reflexologist. I'm a whatever. And then we get stuck trying to explain the process or the science or the history. And the person listening nods and waits for the elevator door to open so they can walk away. Well, you've just missed a chance to engage them in their own wellness. And it may well be the only chance you'll get. So before you're tempted to start with the word I, remember this, a smart elevator speech is not about you. It's about an inner problem your listener has that only you and resonance repatterning can solve without pills, invasive procedures, or years of therapy. Now, chances are your listener is preoccupied with their own problem. They won't hear a word you say unless you throw a red flag in their mind stream and get their attention, really get their attention. So a smart elevator speech gets your listener's attention. It names their problem and then guides them through to the solution you alone offer. People are more willing to open their pockets to you when they feel warmed and relieved of fear. So a smart elevator speech has four prompts. 
Carolyn was going to, I'm not sure we can put them up on the screen now here with this Google Plus thing, but the thing to do is to memorize these four prompts. I'm going to give them to you. So you will never be tempted to start with the word I. What you want to start with is, do you know? You want to start with a question, a red flag question, which names the practical problem, and then, then you set the hook by naming the emotional problem. Now, the number two prompt is what I do. You start with do you know, that's your first section, then you go into a what I do. This is a brief description of your solution, the service you offer. Number three, you turn around back to the listener so that you, you list the practical and emotional benefits your clients experience. Number four, call to action. What do you want them to do to fulfill the end goal you started with? You always want to have an offer ready. So let's dive into these four prompts right now so you know exactly what they are and how to use them. Number one, do you know? This first question has to get the listener's attention. Questions always engage a part of the listener's mind seeking a solution. So make your opening question a really good one. Make it relevant to your ideal customer and be able to draw a direct line from their problem to the solution you offer. Next, and this is really important, you need to have an idea of the market niche or problem you service. Do you work with women? Children, men, business people, healthcare professionals, I know you will resist defining your market this way. But trying to be all things to all people is an impossible position to promote. If you get the right description and do a good job for the people and problem you are best with, then other people will find you anyway. They'll just come through your door. So don't be afraid to define the problem you solve. It may be Moms who fight with their teenage kids. It may be businessmen who are undermined by anxiety. Or women who suffer from depression. So next, once you have that idea in place, do some homework. Find a statistic about the problem. That's the way you'll get started. Let's take depression, for example, because it is on the rise around the globe. And here's a statistic I found that has fueled a renaissance in my own repatterning practice. See how it sets up my elevator speech. Do you know the, that the World Health Organization predicts that by 2020, depression will be the leading disability for women worldwide? And today, 80% of the people in my home state in Rhode Island never get helpful treatment. So now you have a very statistical, logical description of a problem you solve. So the thing to do next is add some emotional content by imagining the inner world of this client. And this is how you kind of set an emotional hook. So you describe what these women are going through. Women like this suffer from low energy right down to the cellular level. They give up on their friends and even their families. As a result, it can be very hard for them to climb out of the pit of worthlessness and even suicidal thinking. The real problem is that pills and talk therapy seldom resolve the source of their depression, which is internalized, disempowering, shock, and trauma. Have you noticed this? Maybe you know someone who's suffering this way. So now we've got their attention. And what I hope you're beginning to notice is that an elevator speech is not about what you've studied, what artists has taught you, what you've become proficient in, it is about the people you're interested in and, the, and, and about proving that you're the one person who can help them solve that problem. So that was number one. Number two, what I do. Now you get to talk about yourself for one brief shining moment. Keep it factual, keep it to the point, avoid technical details, no jargon. So do you offer sessions? Probably, yes. Teleseminars, lectures, group events, books? Do you sell supplies? Do you work by phone? Do you work in person? Do you work by Skype? These are the specifics of how you deliver your service. It tells the listener or the reader how they will interact with you. It helps them begin to imagine working with you. 
and this should be a separate page on your website. And it also helps if you list a choice. Keep in mind that your prospective customers may be hesitant or may have some doubts, especially with this invisible and tangible energy work. Group events in which your listener is not the sole focus of attention can be a gentle way for them to experience your service and build trust in you. You have to remember how many of them have been traumatized. And with some trust, it's easier for them to commit to a series of private sessions with you, which is really what you want. So here's an example. What I provide, what I do is, what I provide are gentle energy medicine and resonance repatterning sessions as well as group tele-sessions, books, trainings, all custom designed to help you lift depression. It's because I help you find the problem's old source, change the energy around it, and break up the crystallized patterns that have held your depression in place. Now, that's enough about me. I could go on and on, but that's enough about me. Now we turn it back to your listener because this next section is all about the benefits that you offer and people buy your services because of the benefits. So this is number three, so that you return the focus to the listener. This part can be difficult for holistic professionals because we're used to thinking in terms of our training jargon and not in terms of what we have actually delivered to our customers. You want to give your prospect both factual proof and emotional uplift. So reach into the experiences you've already had with your clients. Walk into their minds and their hearts, walk around in their shoes, talk with them, ask them what's actually changed. Help them become more self-aware and more appreciative of you in the process. So here's how I might describe the benefits of my Lift Depression service starting with so that you so that you like my clients have the energy to go outside for a walk more than once a week because you're free of the to toxic residue of shock and trauma so your self-esteem improves and you feel empowered so you stand up for a core value on behalf of others and your self-worth soars so you have a vision for your future that's just right for you. So you noticed how this section starts out with a tangible, uh, practical unit of measure like taking a walk, and then it moves on to include emotional benefits. That's how you, as a practitioner, take depression, or whatever your topic is, from an impersonal t statistic to an opportunity for empowerment and personal growth and you demonstrate that transition in your elevator speech. So if, if you have time in your speech and you want to include some science, you can go to Bruce Lipton's book, The Biology of Belief. You can go to the Cousin Center website, CousinCenter.com. They have incredible research on, on how mood affects the, our cellular functioning. Or you can quote some resonance repatterning research that 95% of clients feel better to a lot better at the end of a session. But the next step, really, is number four, and it's the call to action. The call to action is something that you specifically want your listener or your reader to do that creates a, a point of engagement. So if you've com communicated clearly and directly in the first part of your elevator speech, you should be on track to fulfill the goal that you started out with in the beginning. So ask yourself, now that I've named this problem and shown the benefits my services deliver, what can I offer that will prompt an exchange with this listener? Soft offers, I call them soft offers, include options like, here's my card, go to my website, sign up for my newsletter. Or something more specific might be, why don't we make a date to meet for coffee? Are you free on Monday? Or you could say, perhaps you'd like to join my next seminar. We're going to take a look at the patterns that hold depression in place. Here's my flyer. 
can I sign you up? Or an even more direct one would be, I've expanded my practice to include some advanced energy techniques to boost your personal power. I wonder if you'd like to try a session, a complimentary session. I have some time available next week. How about it? So your choice of offer obviously depends on what your goal is, what you started out with ahead of time. But again, start with the end in mind. So let me just have a little drink here and we'll put this all together. So with all four prompts come together, you can see how you end up with one memorable speech. So again, the goal here is to build a practice using energy medicine, including resonance repatterning, to help women lift depression. So I'm going to say this, I'm going to imagine, you imagine you're standing in front of a group of people who don't know your work, and you have about 90 seconds to engage them. You can resonate with attracting all the clients you want, but unless you know what to say, you'll have trouble getting their attention. So, here goes. Do you know the World Health Organization predicts that by 2020, depression will be the leading disability in women worldwide? And in the state where I've just come from, 80% of those women never got treatment. They suffer from low energy because depression clogs their cells. They give up on their friends and their families. As a result, it can be very hard for them to climb out of the pit of worthlessness and, and or avoid suicidal thinking. The real problem is that the pills and talk therapy that's offered to them seldom resolve the source of the depression, which is internalized, disempowering, shock, and trauma. Have you noticed this? Maybe you know someone like this. So what I provide are gentle energy medicine and resonance repatterning sessions, as well as group telesessions and books and trainings, all custom designed to lift depression. I help you find the problem's old source, change the energy around the problem, and break up the crystallized patterns that hold the depression in place so that you, like my clients, have the energy to go outside for a walk because you've let go of the toxic residue of shock and trauma. So your self-esteem improves and you feel empowered to initiate a new project at work. So you stand up for a core value that matters to you on behalf of someone else and your self-worth soars. So you're no longer held back by depression and have a new vision for a future that's just right for you. My name is Gail Glanville. My website is changebistro.com. I've expanded my practice to include some advanced energy techniques that boost your personal power. I wonder if you'd like to try a complimentary session. I have some time next week. How about you? So there is a can't fail, a smart elevator speech. And in less than 90 seconds, I hope I've made an indelible impression. And I hope that you have a way, an, a way forward to create something like this for yourself. Now before I go, I just want to tell you that sometimes you don't have 90 seconds. Sometimes you're lucky to get in two sentences. But here's how to do it using this format. All you need is the first two prompts. And this is how my copywriting mentor, Bob Bly, does it. He's so cool. He says, you know all that junk mail that comes through your door? Well, I write it. So, taking that formula, we might say, you know how heavy depression feels? Well, I give it wings. Or, you know how sometimes life just feels stuck? Well, I give you a jump start. Or, you know how careers can fall flat? I energize them. So those are just very simple ways to shrink this down. And there's an even shorter way. Sometimes there's kind of this game of can you talk about yourself in eight words or less? This system that you've just learned will let you do that. With this version, you do start with I, but not I am. You start with I and then a verb. So it might sound something like this. I write copy that sells. I give energy sessions that uplift. Every one of you do that. 
I teach worldwide without leaving home. It's for you, artists. I, this one's for Chloe. I create systems that improve people's energy. Or I might say, I give resonance repatterning sessions that lift depression. Very simple and straightforward. But notice that, that you're never saying I or I am or I am a. You are saying I, you're including an action verb, and you're including the result. Lift depression. So, this may seem complicated, but how do you make it yours? It's very simple. Practice. Write it out, stand in front of a mirror, say it out loud until you're completely comfortable with it. Practice until your introvert nature, which I am, has the courage to stand up in front of a crowd and talk about what you do. And practice until your extrovert nature is comfortable with the discipline and depth that this kind of elevator speech lets you make. And finally, Practice when you know how to change it, until you know how to alter it, how to make it really yours. So, let's review. You've learned to start with the end in mind. You've learned the four prompts, do you know, what I do, so that you, and then the call to action. You've learned how to speak about what you really do without jargon. You've learned about creating a really short form statement. And I hope you've learned why it's so important to know the problem you're solving and the person you're solving it for. You, it's impossible to create an elevator speech without having that kind of focus. So I hope you've learned everything you need to know to step up and stand out in a world that needs your energy healing talents. They need all of us. So artists, I know that we have other um, series coming up. I know that all this will be available on YouTube. Um, and once these are all done, I hope to put them into an ebook that can be downloaded from my website. So that we have it, the video, we have an ebook, and um, get more practitioners out there in the world. So thank you for this opportunity. Well, thank you, Gail. I, I learned so much just listening to what you said, um, and I, I'm going to be the first one to download your ebook when you have it. But I also really would like to encourage you to consider putting a course together. 